Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm, I'm Frank Sinatra. I'm your moderator today. Uh, we're joined here with Dr. Ronnie Tartici, Superintendent of Schools for the Pennsylvania School District, and Mr. Nick Perry, who is the President of the Board of Education for Pennsylvania Public Schools. Um, thank you for joining us today. Just as a quick little recap, uh, a lot of parents and constituents have sent in some questions. We will be highlighting those. If we do have time, um, we will be able to uh, answer questions from uh, folks. Like for example, if Kevin here said here, he's here, so we can highlight some of those as it comes in. We will also be posting questions. Um, we've allocated about uh, an hour or so for these questions. We're going to uh, get through them. A lot of them were um, identical, so that kind of helps a few things. And um, if there's some follow-up questions from folks, uh, feel free to put it into the comments. Um, and uh, like for example, Brittany has a question about protocols uh, for uh, in case of someone being contracted with COVID. We're, we have those for our questions as we go through. So um, please be patient with us. And if there's any follow-up questions, put them in here and we'll, we'll get started right now. So a big question that we've received in the last few days, and we'll post that right here, is why isn't the Pennsylvania School District going full remote? Well, I can answer that. So um, we did everything by the book. So we, we polled all of our students, parents, teachers. And in polling our parents, we found out only 50%, a little less than 50%, uh, district-wide want to go full remote. So as a school district, we have an obligation to those parents and to those students to educate them. A lot of parents have jobs they have to go to, and um, you know we don't want them to not go to their job, not pay their bills, lose their house, not, food on, not put food on the table. We have an obligation to uh, educate those students, and we will. And we'll help out the parents because that's our job. Okay. All right. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing some of those questions um coming in and we, we do have like stephanie and rose we do have questions down the road so please be patient we will be getting to those um now is there a scenario where the district would go full remote? it's a possibility um it depends on uh, let's just say for example if we have a, a percentage of the high school that would get um you know test positive for covid and the contact tracing through the county health department would tell us that it makes sense for you to shut down the school now, then we would do that. But let me be clear that just because the high school would uh, go for a two week quarantine, that doesn't mean the entire school district will. So like the, the elementary might still be running if the scenario goes vice versa as well. The elementary, one of the elementary schools shut down doesn't mean all of them will shut down. It just means that we would have one elementary school shut down. Okay. All right, so let's uh, talk about the, the start of the 2020-2021 school year uh, as, uh, as it looks for full remote students. So what we're going to do is we'll start talking about, and I have a little thing here to put up. Let's start talking about remote learning for pre-K through grade five. I know that we got a lot of questions, particularly about the little guys and little girls uh, about kindergartners and pre-K, about how their days look. So um, if anyone wanted to chime in about, you know, what the hours are, what the, you know, will people have to tune in at a specific time, things of that nature, you know, it's some details on that. Sure. Well, so um, let's talk about remote learning for K through five, pre-K through five. So the remote learning, anyone who's wanted it in pre-K through five received it. They'll have a separate teacher. The teacher will be fully remote, and so will the students. The students will be, like for example, uh, a group of students will be assigned to one teacher, and they will teach them all content areas in grades K through five. Um, we have an AB split model, a hybrid model, that students can also come in during K through five, and the students will come in every other day. So this was also something, uh, remote learning for grade six through grade 12. Now, obviously there's some things that have kind of evolved with this uh, in the last couple of days, sure. as, as many parents have, have asked questions about. So 
if you want to go into the deal, sure. details about that. Well, for grades six through twelve, um, we can stay through. Um, we we're going to be on the pacing guide of the curriculum the entire time. So if I'm an A student and I'm here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, I'm going to be in the school and I'll be on my laptop. In addition, if I'm a B student, I'm home. I will be logging in to the lesson on my laptop and remote students will be logging in both days, the A and B days. So every day will be a new lesson through remote learning. But and, and we'll have A students there one day, B students there one day and remote students logging in every single day. Everything is live streamed through 6 to 12. Okay. Now, and, and students have to, for remote learning, they have to log in uh, daily. Yes. So you log into your schedule. So you'll be logging in like, like normally. The high school schedule is 7 to uh, close to 2 o'clock, and you're logging in for every class that you have. Okay. Now. And logging in on time. On time, please. Right. Now, a lot of people have questions about live streaming. And uh, I think the biggest question would be, how do remote students engage with their teachers through sure. live streaming? What tools will teachers have? Because they'll have students in the classroom, right. and then they'll have students logging in via their computers at home. Sure. I mean, that's... Well, so the district has purchased smart technologies where the students will be able to communicate with their teachers through um, their Chromebooks in addition to listen to the lessons. So, for example, if I want to ask my teacher a question and I don't want anyone but the teacher to know about it, I can type the question in and it will appear on the student on the teacher's screen. And uh, they can answer the question out loud for the students or just they can type the answer back and forth. The student can communicate with the teacher through the Chromebook as well. So um, uh, the, you, the student can always notify their teachers of any questions and there will be office hours for the teachers and the students if they have any very specific questions. Okay. Um, what technology platform do we have for, is it, is it Google based, is it Zoom? It's, it's Google based and we're using smart technology. So yes. So we purchased smart technology because this acts as a, it works with Google and it also works with every platform we have, the smart boards the students have in their classrooms where they can, uh, the teachers can utilize all their different, um, all the different technology they have to educate the students just as if they were actually in the classroom the entire time. Okay. And I see some questions from, from uh, Kevin and, and William. Uh, we do have those coming up uh, a little bit later, so please be patient. Um, Amanda, I think we talked a little bit about your question uh, with Dr. T's uh, uh, description right there. So what was the percentage, the breakdown uh, for full remote? Uh, as we said earlier, it's about 50%. Okay. Close to 50%. Okay. Now, Kevin, this is an interesting uh, follow-up question. Um, now, will parents need to be at home for, for full remote learners? Say it again. Will parents be, when, when they have children that are full remote, um, are they going to need somebody at home, or is it something, I mean, it obviously depends on age group. Yes, I mean, like, I would, I would um, the, so the parents don't need to help their kids for the remote learning. I mean, for the first couple of weeks through pre K, K and one, you're going to guide them through the process, but then they're going to get, they're going to catch on very fast. The little guys in pre K are doing two hour and 40 minute sessions. And they're going to have a tablet with their teachers. Um, so it's, it's going to be very self-sufficient for them after a little bit. Okay. Now people, the older students won't need anyone. Okay. Now they were talking about um, the uh, percentages for schools for remote learning. Do we have a breakdown of, which elementary schools went remote, like how many percentage for, for each school? Yeah, throughout the district, it's about 50%. And um, the high school is a little under 50%, about 41%. Okay. So, but, but generally, um, and, you know, we're jumping the gun a little bit, what would be the percentage that would be involved in the AV split? So that means that you would have 25% capacity in your, in your buildings if you're doing an AV. So you will have 25% of your students. If you have 50% on a remote and we're doing AB, that means you'll have 25% of your students in the buildings at any given time. Okay. So a, a lot of people have been having questions about um, accommodating students with IEPs, uh, those that need uh, occupational therapy and, and things like that. Sure. And they're doing remote learning. So how, how, are, they being, how are things being handled for... 
children with special needs and issues uh, for remote learning. So we, we were, were, were definitely answering all the needs in the IEPs. What I would recommend the parents do is contact your case manager and ask these questions specifically for your child because every child is different and it can't be one blanket answer. So I would say contact your case manager and have your case manager go through the specifics with you. And, and Jessica, we will get to talking a little bit more about the hybrid schedule and a little bit so we be patient. Um, we have, uh, how do students get extra help? Like tutoring, uh, anything like that, or they need help with certain subjects. Are you talking about remote students now? Yes, this is still full or not. Yes. Sure. So if, or if you have, in, if you have issues with anything, there is an intervention period daily for students on full remote. So every day there'll be an intervention period with, with your teacher where they can go through any questions you have. Let's just say I'm a fourth grader learning graphing or equations and I, need a, I, need, I have very specific questions. You can log in a specific time every day. And your teacher can go through those questions with you personally. Okay. Will there be packet work? No. Okay. So we are fully, we are going fully electronic now. All right. Sounds good. <clears throat> All right. So uh, we didn't kind of talk about, but for a child who has a one-on-one -on -one aid, is that something that they have to talk to the child study team about? Yes. So, I mean, we, 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 cannot send an aide to the child's house, um, but you talk to your, uh, you, your your case manager and they'll go through the specifics of your individual case. Okay. Now, um, I know a lot of folks have had questions about um, additional information about remote learning, um, their schedules, login credentials for Chromebook, yes. instructors, things of that nature. When, when is that coming out? So, so we just finished registration last week, and all the students have been placed in their classes as of today. So you'll have there. There will be specific guidelines of what students need to do daily, posted to our website, and students will receive something from their building administrators telling them where they are, and then the teachers will give them very specific instructions of a daily occurrence. Okay. And my ask if we could put maybe what a full remote learning schedule might be on the on the website. Sure. Yeah. Schedule. Absolutely. So we can, we Sure, and then for elementary, it'll be very specific what you're doing every single day. Okay. So if you start with math, language arts, you'll see that, and it'll be the same throughout district. Okay, and uh, Megan has a question about how the smart technology works a little bit. Could you give a little extra detail on, on that? So for smart technologies, it's embedded within the Chromebook, and um, students can, for example, they can ask their teachers questions through Chromebook tech, through, through their Chromebook. Let's say I'm learning, my teacher is here at the high school and they're teaching me Algebra 2. And I'm watching the teacher as they're going through a, a specific equation or, or a concept. I can then ask my teacher a question through my Chromebook or um, I can have a one-on-one -on -one with my teacher through a breakout session. And the teachers are all going to be trained on smart technology on September 3rd. And then the students will then, it's, it's going to be a working process, progress, but it's a very good system that allows full understanding of any concept we're learning in schools. Okay. So will remote learning include specials? Yes. Yes, it will. And then the, uh, there was a question about like the gifted program. Will remote students be able to participate in, in a gifted program? So uh, currently right now, classes have not really changed. It's going to be difficult to implement everything that we have done in schools through remote learning. So we just ask that you be patient with that. Okay. Um, add this one in here. Uh, and, and, and Steph, uh, there'll be some information sent out to students about the Chromebooks. Um, Dr. Keith just did talk about that, so um, that's, that is coming. So. I know you talked a little bit about this, um, about how teachers are going to be available for, uh, for student help. So are teachers going to be accessible? Yes. Of course. So they're going to be accessible daily through intervention period. They have prep periods where they offer uh, parent-teacher conferences. So, I mean, they'll be accessible continuously throughout the day and then uh, for conferences twice a week. So remote teaching will have accessibility of teachers 100%. Okay. And this was a question that was asked a couple times, and uh, we have a good answer for you. Will students participating in remote learning be able to participate in extracurricular activities and sports? Yes. So the NGSIA says that they can, so they can. Um, but, um, 
you know, if let's just say you have to get here for a sport, right? You got to make sure that the student got to has to make sure that they, they they get their own transportation here, you know, because everything changes daily with times. Okay. Uh, another magic question: Do students need to wear uniforms if they're doing remote learning? No, I don't know why the student would be in our uniform if they're at home with their families. Um, they can if they like it. I mean, that's fine, but uh, we're not requiring that. And nor do you have to put a mask on during remote learning. But if you're here, you got to wear a mask. Okay. And what about um, like PSATs? Still, everything is still. I mean, it, uh, we don't really. We, we don't have the authority to cancel that, so that will still be going on. So here's another question. If you couldn't attend the registration and you still want to register your kids for, for remote learning, how do you do that? So I would ask that you reach out to our director of technology, Mr. Eric Mossov, and he will direct you on how to do that. But yes, you can. Okay. And another follow-up question. If the sport started already, can, can remote can still participate. Yes, just reach out to the coach of that sport and then see, you know, what's going on. Like football's already started. And, and um, there's no difference between uh, the lessons for uh, full remote and in person. No, no, there's no difference. There is a difference in if I'm learning something in front of a teacher versus on a Chromebook. There is a there is a difference, but the lessons are not different. The, the type of delivery would be different. So here, here's another question. This can kind of either go for, for AB schedule or uh, a remote learning. Um, at what point is it too late to change your decision? I mean, can you? So once you, once you have decided on remote versus hybrid, you've decided for one semester. So let's just say um, a parent suddenly feels very uncomfortable with having their kids in school and they want to go remote. Now, we'll still allow that, but we, 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 we had a deadline of August 15th this past Saturday for putting out remote learning signups. But we will still accommodate your request. Just understand that the school year is about 11 days away now. All right, so let's, let's start hitting some of the AD split schedule questions. Uh, and this was something, uh, why isn't the AD split schedule the same time as each week? Why, you know, like, uh, I, know, I think we've talked about this before. Why A isn't just Monday, oh. Wednesday, B, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, cleaning sure. day, that, that kind of thing. Well, so we deep clean on Friday evenings and every single evening as well. So we don't need to, um, to have one day specifically for cleaning. And I don't want to take a day of instruction away from students. And let's just say, and we talked about this the last time, but if I'm learning a concept like mathematics, like chemistry, like e even language arts, and I don't understand a concept I learned on Monday, and you won't see me again till next Monday, well then, I mean, I I'd rather be able to ask that question the next Wednesday or the next Friday. So every other day makes sense because I learned something I do the classwork or try to figure that thing out. And then let's just say I'm, I'm a little guy, I'm a fourth grader and I still can't get it. I can see my teacher the very next day and then I can learn the concept. It's it's better education. And that's what we're doing here. We're offering good education to our kids. We want them to learn this year and keep up with their pacing guide. Now, a lot of people have been asking this question. How do you know if you're on an A, a day or a B? It's on the calendar. So, but, and then you're saying, how will you know as a student? So one, you're going to be receiving a letter that's going out by your building principal today. Your building principal is going to send out a letter saying you're on an A day instruction. And then you on our website, you will see that there is a calendar that has A days in red, B days in blue. So you just follow that calendar. Okay. And then generally, um, I believe it's um, A through L is generally A day, mm -hmm. M through Z is generally B day. Unless there's a sibling that we've had to accommodate you for, you know, we want the siblings on the same day. Okay. So um, now for uh, for technology for A uh, and B split schedules, when will students get the tablets and the Chromebooks for that? So they've received it. So, but also you said that not the remote students, 
that's the first days of school. So if you're on the first week of school, you'll be receiving your technology. Okay. So we have some information here. The tablets are scheduled to arrive mid-September. That's for the preschool students, yes. Okay, those are the preschool Okay. All right. All right, so let's let's break down what the AB split would look like for um, uh, pre-K through grade five. So you would be here every other day, full days. We have 25% capacity in our building, so we will have the cafeterias at full max. I mean, you, you can easily social distance in there, almost like one kid to a table. So... Um, the students will be able to social distance, they'll have a full day of instruction, and they'll come every other day. So if I'm an A student, I'm here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the next week, Tuesday, Thursday. And the, next, the day that I'm not here, I'm doing asynchronous learning. So for example, um, I learned um, a specific writing skill, some math. The next day when I'm home, um, I have this homework and classwork that I'm, I'm catching up on. And I'm bringing it with me that Wednesday or that Thursday when I come in. All right. So let's talk about the uh, the AB split for grade six through grade twelve. So the AB split is is as we, we discussed it earlier. So I am here and as an A student Monday, Wednesday, Friday, next week, Tuesday, Thursday, and I'm logging in every day that I'm off. So when I'm home, I'm still logging in for my teacher's lessons as well as the remote students logging in to the teacher's lesson. So I'm with my class every single day. I just have to make sure I follow my schedule and log into those classes. So there, there's no there's no um, possibility of getting a redundant lesson? No, no, you just, you, follow, you go right to the pacing guide. Okay, all right. And um, okay. this is something uh, that has been a a very important question, um, and uh, we'll, we'll follow the real quick. I want to get this to this. This is a full day schedule for. Um, yep, okay. it is, it's it's a full day schedule for the entire district. Okay. All right. Now, uh, very important question: What is being done in the schools to keep students and staff safe? Well, the number one thing you can do to keep yourself safe is put a mask on. Right. If you wear a mask every single day, every single day, then you're safe. OK, we've also gotten face shields for our students. I'm sorry, our um, our staff. And um, we have complete social distancing. You only have a certain amount of desks in classrooms now. Our head of facilities, Mr. Wagner, has really um, made sure the entire district has followed specific strict CDC guidelines. Um, there's less students in the building, 25% capacity. There are specific, you know, if I'm leaving classes, you know, uh, my direction will be one way, walking direction to, walking direction from. Once kids go out on recess, they're going to be social distanced by class. You know, same thing for lunches. I know certain classes will be allowed to go outside for learning. You know, during nice days, they can sit on the grass and they can learn about, you know, science or history or math. Well, you know, anything that can be done outside. So we're taking every precaution we can to make sure that the students are safe here. Um, and, you know, if a student says they're sick during the day, they go to the nurse and then, you know, we if they develop a fever, you have to be out until we receive a doctor's note that says, oh, you know, I'm, I'm symptom free. Um, if somebody tests positive for, for COVID, then we have a specific procedure through the county health department that we follow. We've taken every precaution to make sure that the kids are safe and the, and the staff is safe. And we, we met um, twice now with Mr. Michael Coyle, who is the uh, EMT and EMS of Penn Saucon. The chief. The chief. And he has definitely talked to us and drilled into us those concepts of masks, washing your hands, social distance, making sure that you practice those as you go through the school day. And that's very important for the children to understand and the parents to understand. School's not going to be the same as it used to be. There are going to be new rules that you have to follow that you'll learn as you go through that process during the day. Um, we encourage you to make sure that these children practice these practices at home and as well. Um, 
But right now, as the community goes, and that is Pensacola, and the numbers are relatively low, <clears throat> we are fine. If the numbers increase in the township, we'll have to deal with that as it comes. So this is basically, uh, we're, we're, we're given um, the opportunity to open up schools. We looked at all the data that we can uh, medically. We've spoken to as many professionals as we can. We've read a ton of articles. And I think that we're fine. I think we'll be able to do this and we'll do this very well. We, we presented a great program here at Pensac and we created a great program for Pensac and we want our children to use the facilities that we have here. And the big thing is, is that we, we have to accommodate the, our, our, our parents and we have to accommodate our students. And like Nick said, um, you know, we're doing that through following all CDC guidelines and we've met with Chief Coyle and you know, physicians in the area and everyone says that, you know, they want the schools to open and we're going to open and we're going to do it safely. So um, this is a good question to, to segue into also. Um, what about transportation? Um, you know, what's being done on, on the buses uh, for getting kids back into school safely? So the buses are completely, they'll be sanitized every day between runs, right? Um, there are late buses for sports, but I encourage you to contact your building principal to find out the exact times. Um, and the buses have full social distancing. So, you know, if you're a family, you can sit together on the bus, you know, but other than that, you know, there's that we, we have separations on the bus. Just as a follow up, um, students, they're doing AB split schedule, whether they're from pre-K through seniors in high school, they're going to get technology from the district. Yes, every student gets technology. Okay, all right, and let's see here. There. How will ch class changes be handled uh, in the upper grades? So in the upper grades, certain classes, teachers are moving, and certain classes, students are moving in uniform direction. Okay, all right, so Here's a, here's a good question. Um, let me pull this up. Can you describe the sanitizing methods that will be used between class changes for middle and high school and you know, who will be responsible? Is there, I, I mean, I know we talked a little bit that if there's an opportunity to clean. Sure, well, you know, we have us, we'll, we'll have sanitizing material, right, in every classroom. In every classroom between classes, you know, teachers are welcome to wipe things down. I mean, like, it depends on how much time we have, but we have students see, seated at specific desks. So, you know, um, there there is, we, we have the the sanitizing equipment there for the use. All right, and, and you want to go a little bit about uh, the cleaning procedures that we're, we're putting in place uh, for districts? Well, our cleaning procedures are bar none, uh, top notch. So we have, Mr. Wagner has put in a plan that uh, the, the, the entire district is clean top to the bottom, top to bottom every single night and uh, every single morning. And we, we wipe down every nook and cranny of the district. So you rest assured that if you walk through our schools, it's gonna be cleaned as thoroughly as possible. And to be honest with you folks, we, we have been in the reopening plan to open our schools since March 13th when we closed it. So we've had multiple meetings with principals, with teachers, with teachers union, with uh, as many people as we can to inform them on what we want to do and what our goals are. Um, cleaning is another issue. It's a great issue for you to talk about, but we are using the highest quality cleaning products that we can that they use in hospitals. So everything that we use, we've thought about. We've been doing this now since March. So it's been thought, rethought. We've gotten information back from the CDC. We've gotten information from Camden County. So what that, by the way, changes almost constantly about what we can and cannot do. So we're pretty uh, agile in looking at what we have to do, but rest assured that we are making sure that these buildings are maintained properly for the safety of the staff and the children. So. We are using what we can, and we are doing what we can to make sure that these environments are safe 
and that the learning environment is a very positive learning environment for our students. Okay, lunches. How do lunches work for the AB split? Okay, so students can bring water. We are allowing water bottles, um, and the lunches work as though they've always worked. We have multiple lunches now throughout the day, and they can bring their own lunches. They don't have to buy it, but they still can buy it. So lunches are the same. So students can, we, the only difference is that we are totally socially distanced and we wipe down um, the cafeteria after its use. Now, are the lunches prepackaged meals or is it, how, how does that work for food the service? Lunch, lunches, the only prepackaged meals are the ones they take with them the next day, right for the next day. But the, during, during the cafeteria, it is 100% like, like it would be, you know. So we are taking safety precautions with our lunches and um, the students will not have to worry about uh, social distancing because they will they will be social distancing in the cafeterias. Okay. What about school lockers? People have been asking questions about So that. lockers are not gonna be used um, and neither are locker rooms. Okay. And, uh, this was a, a two-parter that we received. Uh, can a child wear a face shield instead of a mask? And can I send antibacterial wipes with my child? Okay, so um, one, they can wear a face shield, but they still should have a face mask because the face shield does not really protect you like a face mask would. So they're welcome to wear both. Um, the cl cleaning supplies, um, we don't want kids to bring in their own cleaning supplies. You know, we will make sure the desks are clean, everything's clean, but we don't want kids to bring their own supplies. They can bring in their own hand sanitizer if they like and carry that with them, but they cannot bring in their own cleaning supplies. Yeah, but hand sanitizer is totally cool. Yes. Okay. And we have and hand sanitizer in every room. Sure. I mean, we, we have it everywhere, but uh, you're welcome to bring it. So um, how are students being encouraged to wear their masks? I know that sometimes um, sure. people just, they're not wearing their masks the way that they're supposed to be, mm -hmm. or they're, they're tired. Are there going to be mask breaks? Well, when students go outside, you know, they go outside and they're they're socially distanced. You know, there'll be mass breaks. And, you know, when they're socially distanced in, in the classroom, we're going to make sure that, you know, they have time to feel, feel like a human being and take their mask off. But we're encouraging them to wear it at all times um, just for their own safety. And um, additionally, um, like I said earlier, we're going to have lessons being taught outside. So if I spread you out, you know, and you're seated there and you want to take a little mass break, that's fine, too but we're encouraging them to wear it at all times. The second thing is, you know, when they're doing health and phys ed outside, you know, it's gonna be tough to have their mask on, you know, so we're, we're aware of that. And um, we wanna send it out to the parents that, listen, I am with you when it comes to mask. I, I, I have a, it's, it's hard to imagine my three little boys in mask all day, but um, I'm gonna encourage them to wear their masks all day. And we're gonna, we're gonna, make sure that they, they feel as though they can take them off from time to time, you know, but we're going to encourage them to wear it all the time. As long as if they're socially distanced and they're in fresh air, you know, we, we're going to encourage it and make sure that they feel as though they, they can still have fun and be kids. Okay, what about the gym uniform issue? Is, is... So that's a yes, but make sure you check with your building principal first, you know, because your building principal might uh, have specific things that he wants or she wants done. And certain elementaries don't even wear a uniform. So make sure you check with your building principal first. Okay. Um, what about uh, closets for jackets and book bags? Well, so if they're a little guy, right, we want to just put the jacket right on top of your chair that you're on, you know. And um, we want to kind of keep all your stuff together so it just mitigates the spread of anything, you know. So there's there's not really a lot of closets or a lot of closet space that we, we, we will have to offer. All right. So let's talk about, um, let's see here, we'll just follow up on a couple things. Um, you had mentioned um, that your sons, uh, you're having issues with you. They're in district, right? Yes, my boys go to fine school all three of them will be, and um, they'll all be in school every day. Well, all AP days. And I have uh, several grandchildren here, one at the high school, two at the middle school. So they, they are attending school here. 
So and it's okay. We I don't want to make it sound like it's not okay to have your kids remote. It's one hundred percent okay as well. You know, it's my choice to have them in school, and that's Nick's choice too. And if you choose to have them remote, that's good too. Um, now this was a question that had been asked several times, and it's 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 also an important one. So if someone tests positive for the coronavirus, mm -hmm. so what's the procedure? How is that communicated to the, uh, the district community? So what we do is we, we send it to uh, the county health department. They, they do the contact tracing, but we will let the parents know, you know, that your kid has been at risk for being exposed to the coronavirus. And let me just say this, right? Um, it's like the chief, Chief Coyle said earlier yesterday, it's okay to um, be, not to be exposed, but it's, it's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, we're all out here. It is a, it is a airborne virus, like the flu, like the common cold, these things are airborne. So we want to let you know that we're going to take every precaution, but we don't want you to be ashamed to say, hey, listen, I think I might have the coronavirus. It's okay. You know, we've had staff, we've had, um, you know, other students that have had the coronavirus. It's okay. We just, we have a process. 15 days and you come back to school with a doctor's note. It's really no big deal. You know, the coronavirus is a big deal itself, but I don't want any student to feel that they're ashamed to tell us that they have it. Nothing's going to happen. Right? You're just going to be quarantined and we're, we're all going to do the right thing. Okay, You're, I mean, it's no, it's no problem. Uh, and um, Nick, you said that you had a, a meeting today. With, yes. You want to go into that a little bit? Sure. We've had several meetings. Uh, well, with Chief Coyle, we've had two meetings recently just to get an update about what's going on in our community. And I think from what we, we saw from uh, talking with Chief Coyle, we are in very good shape. We are in the green mode here. Uh, as well as some of our surrounding communities. We're more concerned about what's going on in Pensacola. We also met with the teachers union today to resolve any questions they had. They had about three pages of questions that we resolved. Um, we have met, um, I personally have been involved in three meetings with um, mostly principals remotely um, in reopening our schools. So any questions we've We've kind of worked through all of this now for months. Uh, the young man next to me, Dr. Tartici, has led a great group of administrators and teachers to put together a plan that's extremely positive, that is well thought out. And I think once we implement it, we get ourselves started, our sea legs moving, and the children understand their role that they have to play within a school building. The teachers understand the role they have to play in their building. I think we'll have a very positive uh, environment for our children to learn. Uh, just as an example, the coaches, which I want to thank personally now, have had a program that involves uh, right around 300 children for the last three weeks. We have had no issues. So the children were outside, they were at the stadium, they social distance, they did whatever practice they have to do. The football team is starting their practices with all the safety precautions that is necessary. We have had no issues. We've had no cases. We've had some children have had fevers, but they everybody has a fever every now and then. It had nothing to do with COVID. So right now, I think we're in a great shape for us to open. We've resolved any issues that we've had with the unions, any of the unions, but that's transportation, uh, AFSCME, and any other group that may have concerns. Okay. Um, somebody had a question about Genesis. Uh, <laughs> Sorry to drop something. Uh, the parent portal will be available uh, in the uh, the coming weeks. So uh, final changes are being made to teacher assignment based on students students to registering. Uh, there is again, there's a follow up. We uh, Dr. T said you still can register for full remote if sure. you're, you're looking. Just uh, let Eric Mossop know. Let Mr. Eric Mossop know, Director of Technology, and um, make an appointment and we'll make sure you get the, the, the proper remote learning pro, um, technology. Okay. And then uh, again, we're going to put out some information about, about schedules yes. uh, to give some more timing. And we'll put that up on, on the, 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 so we'll put it up on the, um, on website. the website next week to show you the schedules you'll have, but you'll be notified by your principals. If you're, you know, like which cohort a B you're in and those letters going out today. Okay. This is, this is very nice from Maya wants to thank the teachers and the principals and staff. Okay. This is a very interesting question. Um, how do yearbook photos work? 
Um, we haven't gotten to that yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So I, I guess I mean they will be happening. Because... Sure. I guess you have to stand <laughs> six. Have, to have to stand six feet away from the camera. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and what about uh, Saturday SAT prep? That's still going to be on. All that all that is going to be on. We're we're still preparing the students to go to college. And for all the athletes out there, you can see that you know um, we we have kept things going. We've tried to keep things going for you. You know, because you're going to go to college, too. And if you have a, an athletic career in college, we want to make sure that you're not shortchanged here either. Okay. All right. So um, the, uh, to answer um, some questions like Heather had, we're going to put that daily schedule out and we'll have that posted on, on the website yep. uh, as, as soon as possible. We're going to get some, some details on that. I mean, it's already in the plan. It's in the plan that I posted on our district website, but I can make it very visual for you. But, you know, the best thing to do is you're, you're going to see an A-B schedule. So the remote learning plan is just what you're doing from, let's just say, 8.30 to 2 o'clock. But uh, when you're here in buildings, it's going to be the same schedule you normally follow. You know, so you'll see that. We also had a question about middle school sports. Um, as of right now, middle school sports are, are canceled. Okay. As of right now. And all co-curricular activities, as of right now, if they're inside, are also canceled. And then uh, somebody, Arlene, had a question about book bags. So a lot of this stuff is, is digital. There's not going to be copies or paper or... Well, you still might get a paper in school. I mean, that's okay. You know, so um, you can, you, I, you, you'll you have your book bags. You, you mean, you'll have your Chromebooks. But, um, you know, your principals will let you know if you're bringing the Chromebooks back and forth, K-5. They're not... So um, you can still get papers. You can still have like writing materials. You're going to have manipulatives. You're going to have things like that. Um, and there's going to be things like kids have to practice writing. So they're going to be writing on things. Uh, and uh, to, to uh, you're welcome. I was clicking on something, but I appreciate it. Um, the video will be posted again. It'll, it'll stay here. Yes. So just as a, a, a reminder, um, and Beverly, we'll get yours in a second. I didn't really click on it, but we'll get to it. Um, this is happening on Friday, August 21st, between noon and whenever we wrap up. If for some odd reason, this is not Friday, August 21st, and you are looking at this and you have questions, we'll do our best to circle back and answer them. Uh, it's just we won't be able to respond to them too quickly. Uh, I know some people thought that you know we were doing the Facebook Live a little later, and had some questions that we didn't get to because it was after hours. Um, let me see if I can get back to Beverly's question. For older students, if, uh, would an A day miss lessons if they are taught days they are working from home? Um, no, there's no missed lessons because every day is a, I mean, you're logging in every single day, even from home. So you're, there's no missed lessons. Okay. Um, so about buying uniforms, it's, it's still third base? Yeah, third base. Is the place in Merchantville, does that open to the place in Merchantville? Uh, uh, possibly. Yes, yeah, yeah I, I, I forget the name there. of it. It's yeah. on Center Street. It's on Center yeah. Street in Merchantville. Mm -hmm. You can buy uniforms there as well. Okay. And a uh, question about textbooks. Um, are there going to be access to textbooks for full remote learning? Yeah, so you just that that'll go through your building principle. So, depending upon what what textbook is needed for what content area. Okay, um, for Chromebooks for K to five, um, are they staying home and not going back and forth? Yes. Okay. All right. Now we have a question about NJ. Uh, SIAA guidelines, so about sports. That's true. They are starting. there. We, we have all the NJSAA guidelines now. So there, there's a two-week break, and then they're supposed to start back, I believe, uh, the 14th or 15th of September. And, um, you know, this this these types of guidelines are subject to change. So um, as of right now, sports are starting. All right. Um, here's a here's a good question. Um, what if you want to switch over to regular homeschool if doing full remote? If you want to, you, so that's that's if you want to do homeschooling, you can. 
you know, you just have to have your curriculum approved by the state of New Jersey. It's a relatively easy process, and then you can do that. I would encourage parents to let us, you know, um, educate the students remotely. It's going to be much easier on you, and they're going to follow our curriculum, which is going to kind of keep them on pace. That's just my recommendation. You know, um, you do whatever you feel is right. Now, uh, just as, as a follow-up, um, middle school sports aren't covered by the NJSIA. The middle school sports league has been canceled. Uh, so that's more for the high school. Right. So that's what I said. Middle school sports are canceled. Okay. Now, um, just a, a follow-up question. The, the plan that, or the, the highlighted information document that, we, that was posted on the website yesterday, that's... Is that what was sent to the state, or is that was that just a highlight of the? Other yeah, well, it's it's in a different format for the state, but yes, I don't know why that's a question here, but yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Is there a chance school will go full remote last minute? There's always a chance. You know, there's okay. a chance for anything, but I, I, we will, we will try to stay open because our families need us to. You know, parents have to go to work, and uh, they're expecting us to have the kids in school. Right. And then uh, conversely, if there's a point, you know, down the road during the school year that, you know, the numbers are down, there's a vaccine that works, and, and the governor said, all right, everybody can go back to school, we all go back to school. Sure. I don't see why not. Um and uh, I, I think also, if, if parents have mask questions about additional issues, like I know that there's some uh, students that might have sensory issues, things of that nature, that's built into the governor's guidelines, correct? Yes. Yeah. So if there are issues with actually wearing masks based upon an IEP or whatever it might be, um, we have face shields for the students. And that just has to be communicated to the student's case manager and the building principal. So, I mean, we have cases like that. Okay. Um, here's a question about uh, accelerated classes. So, um, if we can fit it into the curriculum, accelerated classes are still being offered. So, yes, I mean, for example, accelerated classes here at the high school will still be offered. So, we do have that going on. Okay. All right. And um, the A B split schedule. That is, there's, there's, is there any thing that might happen where that might change at all, or is that just? Nope. Unless we have um, an assurance from the governor that you know we can open schools for five days a week, you know we'll stay on an A B for right now. Okay. And Danielle, to answer your question, generally. Um, a through L are A days, and M through Z are B days, uh, and, and siblings will be on the same schedule. Yep, and you'll receive something from your building principal next early next week. It's being sent out today. Okay. All right. And then um, for those that are doing the A-B split schedule, that technology is coming in mid-September? Yeah, well, they get it. They, they the get it. The tablets are, okay. Well, that's, the tablets are only for preschool students. Uh, the Chromebooks will be given to all students, and the tablets given to preschool students if they're A, B, when they come in the first week. All right. So I think that um, a lot of these questions have probably already been answered. Um, and, uh, you know, again, we'll leave this video up for people to view. Sure. Uh, we'll also have this on uh, Pentawaki Television which will be uh, channel 19 on Comcast, channel 21 on Fios. We'll uh, have it on YouTube as well, so uh, people can review it. We'll put it up on the district website uh, as well. Sounds good. Are we gonna wrap up? Yeah, we're wrapping up. Because I, I would like to say something to the public, personally on, on behalf of myself and the school board. I cannot thank Dr. Tartici enough for his leadership during this uh, period that we've had. Um, I cannot thank the maintenance people, the transportation people, the secretaries, the teachers, the administrators, all the people that have played a role in reopening our schools. They have done a fantastic job. 
We are extremely proud of all of them. We know this is a difficult situation for all of us. We live in a community that wants the schools to reopen. We are doing that as safely as we humanly possibly can. We thank you for your support. We look forward to a great school year. We have built a fabulous school system here under the leadership of Dr. Tartici and his administrators. We offer a program that, that unlike any other program in this region, there is no other school district where you can go and get the CTE program in school here like we have here. And we have multiple, multiple, multiple programs for our children. You want to be a doctor, you want to be a lawyer, you want to be a pharmacist, you want to be an electrician, you want to be a carpenter, you want to be an automotive, you want to be an ROTC. We offer that here at Pensac and we built that. Unfortunately, we had a little stalemate in March. We are going to continue that. We believe in our students, we believe in the faculty. So thank you. May the good Lord bless and protect and soften the students and staff and our children. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks, Nick. Thank you, Frank. And, um, you know, um, we look forward to seeing our kids. So we want to Absolutely. see you guys September 8th. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Blessings. Thank you.